Hey, what's good, everybody? It's your boy, Jolly by Nature, and we are back bringing you our team builder for Chapter 4 PvP, the Blast Burn Radio Nuzlocke World Tour. You guys might actually be seeing this team builder before you see the gameplay from this chapter, and I'm sorry for that, you guys. Um, the holidays have been really, really good, really great. My kids had a great time. I had a great time. They were fantastic. But it's a really rough time as far as getting dick all done. Um including BBR stuff. So I'm still digging out of the hole that the holidays put us in, uh, but we're going to get there. But we do have a podcast to record, which means we have PVP to participate in. And so I've got feelings about the teams that, that we've put together at this point. Uh, there's definite room for improvement. and I'm looking forward to the next couple of weeks of encounters to try to like balance some things out. But overall, we got some really potent threats this week that I'm really excited to see what we can do with. Um, we're still not in the best position. I don't think vis-a-vis uh, -vis our opponents um, and matching up well to them, unfortunately. There are just some, some not insignificant disadvantages that we're at, and we'll definitely get there talking about that. Um, but there's also some good stuff. So let's, let's talk about our team and, and what we've got and go from there. Um, now, first things first, we picked up a Mandibuzz this week, Rita the Mandibuzz. And I bring that up first because we got a problem, you guys. Um, Pokemon Showdown, for whatever reason, pulls its moveset data from Black and White and not Black and White 2. And that's caused us some, some issues in PvP this generation uh, in a way that it never really has before. Using Showdown has never caused a noticeable difference from playing on cartridge until Black and White 2. And to date, that has exclusively affected my my uh, co-hosts. Um, specifically, they both have a Magnum Might, now a Magneton, uh, and those Magneton have not had access to their whole move sets because they're going off of their black and white learn set levels and not their black and white two levels, which has been frustrating for them. Um, and we've done a couple of different things to combat that. We played one match in the Gen 6 meta to see if that was better, but because of the way like mechanics change, it's actually worse in some ways. And and now they're just not having access to their full uh, their their full learn sets, which is frustrating. The other half of that, the maybe more frustrating half of that, is that this week we got access to, depending on your version, either a Mandibuzz or a Braviary, fully evolved, well below the level those Pokemon naturally evolved. And we all took it. We all caught it. I caught Rita the Mandibuzz. Mess caught a Mandibuzz. Celeste caught a Braviary. And those Pokemon are dope. They're great. Pokemon Showdown won't let us use them uh, because they're under the level that those Pokemon evolve. They can't be a Mandibuzz. They can't be a Braviary until they're level 54. They're legitimate Pokemon, so I'm not sure why this is an issue. And I actually, I made a point of reaching out to Pokemon Showdown to say like, hey, this is a problem. Like, who do I need to contact to see about having it fixed? No response yet. I don't know if we're gonna get a response. Like, this has to be a pretty low issue on their totem pole. We have got to be the only motherfuckers playing <laughs> low level Gen 5 PvP, right? But it's frustrating. So, we've really only got a PvP roster of seven this week, and that's true for all of our opponents as well. Mandibuzz was on Mess's PvP roster, uh, Braviary was on Celeste's PvP roster, and rather than each train an additional mod at the last minute, we decided to just let that ride. So we are. Um, so our PvP roster this week will not include Rita the Mandibuzz, but it will include Multor the Magmar now evolved, which is dope. We like we like a Magmar. Um, Bold natured with uh, Flame Burst, Confuse Ray, Fire Spin, and Return. Uh, Swoop the Crobat with Return, Confuse Ray, Wing Attack, and Bite. Trakina, our new Heracross, who is a very good girl, uh, with Brick Break, Aerial Ace, Return, and Rock Tomb, uh, which is very very good. I. I like Trakina in this matchup a lot, specifically because of the Rock Tomb. Um, obviously, Celeste at least has access to a Crobat. Um, and Crobat is a big, big problem, obviously, for the quad week to flying um, Heracross. But, like, if we predict that that Crobat is coming in, like, Rock Slide does about 50% to it. Like, it's a, a, or not Rock Slide, Rock Tomb. Like, it's a, it's a really, really solid hit. Um, and at minus one speed, I don't think it outspeeds us. I don't think. 
no, no. Max speed Crobat, which we know that Celeste's is unlikely to be like jolly, perfect IV max speed. But max speed Crobat is under Heracross uh, at minus one, which means that we can two hit KO it if we catch it with a rock tomb on the switch in, which is very, very good. Um, and that would be like literally ideal. If we can get rid of the Crobat, then Trakina does monkeys work against our opponents both of them um which is which is super good um we have pudgy pig our our pig knight who is again still in kind of a weird place uh where it's a very physical mon but ours is very specially statted uh with all physical moves with heat crash return flame charge and arm thrust heat crash is really interesting um Imbor is like really heavy um and pig knight is is not exactly a light boy either and so the, the way that the damage from that is calculated uh, can actually be like really, really useful, but definitely still a Pokemon that has problems, um, to put it mildly. Uh, we have Kendrix the Sand Slash, who is new to the team. I don't think Kendrix is a forever friend necessarily, but is definitely very good right now. And apologies, guys, I did some playing with Kendrix's moveset. I should have done that on camera, but I just wasn't thinking about it, and I just used the TMs. Um, but we're going into this week with a moveset of Return, Gyro Ball, Magnitude, and Rock Tomb on Kendrix, which I think is really solid against a variety of threats. Both of our opponents have fairly fast things, with again, Celeste having access to a Crobat and a Lilligant that will set up with Quiver Dance and things like that. Um, and being able to Gyro Ball potentially is, is huge. Um, God, that Lilligant's going to be a problem. Um, and then in addition, in the box currently, we have maybe our two most important boys right now. We have Merrick, who is now a Stoutland, a big boy doggo. Uh, with Intimidate, Return, Thunder Wave, Helping Hand, and Crunch. Uh, and then Jason, our Excadrill, our fully evolved Excadrill, uh, with Rock Slide, Dig, Return, and Home Claws. Excadrill is so good, you guys. It is so good. We've been at a disadvantage for two weeks now, as Mess had a Girder, um, and Celeste had a Boldor, and we were stuck with a little baby Drover. But now we have a big boy Excadrill, and he is here to kick ass and take names. Next week, he will have Earthquake, which will make him even fucking better. Uh, he is in a great position to do a, a ton of work here, uh, and we're really excited to see it. You love to see it. You love to see the Excadrill. Um, that being said, I don't feel like we're in a, a, an amazingly great place this week in PvP. Um, we are, of course, up against Messer Engine, whose roster this week is going to consist of Servine, Lee Danny, Magneton, Girder, Radicate, Sandslash, and Aladino. Um, of those seven, I honestly expect that uh, Messer's Servine, Juju, is probably going to be what sits out this week. Um, because, it's, again, it's unevolved. Um, and the difference between quad week and, and regular week to, to fire and flying against my team is, is not huge. It could go the other way. He could bring Servine with Eviolite and leave Manny to leave Vanny on the bench. Like, that wouldn't shock me, but I definitely don't expect him to bring both, both of those grass types against my team. Um, there's definitely some some threat here, right? We've got a Regenerator Audino, um, which at this point in the game is like a, a, a legitimately big deal problem. And we have Gaston the Girder, who is always, always a, a colossal threat. Um, we've got ways to deal with it, obviously. Uh, Moltor is significantly fatter as a Magmar with Eviolite than he was as a Magby. Um, it has Flame Body, so that's, that's a genuinely good tool. Like, we're going to want to switch Moltor into Gaston as, as much as we possibly can to try to get that clutch uh, flame body burn off which would be fantastic although rossberries are available so it's possible that mess makes a big brain play um, and brings gaston the girder holding a rossberry but that would also mean he's not running like an hp berry, which would be good for us um, we've also obviously got trakina although girder gets access to does girder have rock slide at this level it might um girder gen 5 we're at level 32. No, nope, Rock Slide is next week. So no Rock Slide. Rock Throw, um, which is good for us this week. Bad next week. Next week's going to be very unfortunate <laughs> uh, with that particular mod. But that's okay. We can cross that bridge when we come to it. Um, yeah. We are going to need to be careful about Radigan the Radicate not burning the Guts Radicate. But 
Um, all in all, I think we match up relatively well against Mess. Um, again, we've got ground threats to deal with his Magneton, which is one of his better offensive threats. Um, we have plenty of fire and flying to deal with his bugs or his, his grass. Uh, the only the, the big thing that we need to work around right now is, is Gaston the Girder and Piglet the Ogno as well. But that's you know, if if we remove all of Mess's ways to kill us, he can only do so much with the Ogno. Right? Hopefully. Hopefully. Um, now, on Celeste's end of the field, her seven this week are going to be Felix for Duat, Annette for Stoutland, Catherine her Magneton, Caspar, who is still a Growler, uh, Petra the Crobat, Bernadetta the Lilligant, and Raphael the Sand Slash. Um, everybody's rocking a Sand Slash, which is wild. I wasn't sure anybody would be rocking one, and we've all got one. Um, so let's go a couple of different ways with what she said. I am... Actually, I'm expecting it once again, probably to be her starter. Um, again, it's just, it's in that middle stage. It's not quite evolved. It's difficult to bring. She could also sit Caspar the Growlithe, although if there is no Growlithe on Celeste's team, I am going to punish the shit out of that with fire type tracks. So I think if she does not bring Caspar, that is a mistake. Um, but I think it could reasonably go either way, um, especially because with both Mess and Celeste, they have a number of different things that would like to be holding that Eviolite. You know, Mess has the Servine, the Magneton, the Girder. Celeste has the Duat, the Magneton, the Growlithe. Like, all of those would really appreciate Eviolite, and it can only go on one. Um, I've only got two, and I'm only bringing one of them. Spoilers. Um, so it's really easy for me to, to portion off that particular item. It's going to be more challenging for our um, but yeah, I definitely think that either Felix the Duat or Caspar the Growlithe sits for Celeste this week, and I think that regardless of which one of those does not come, that's something we can punish. Bernadetta the Lilligant is a huge, huge threat. Um, ideally, perfect world, we need to control who gets slept to activate Sleep Claws and prevent Celeste from using it to, to overly set up. Um... I think ideally Merrick, the Stoutland, right? Like, I think that, because he can still pivot in and get an Intimidate off, even asleep. Uh, I think that he's our best bet to, to go nap nap. Um, obviously being able to paralyze things on this team, which means Celeste's team is stupid fast. Um, and yeah, it's just gonna be a matter of, of dealing with these threats. I, I don't feel great about Celeste's team, although honestly, I think I feel better about it this week than I ever really have before. Like, I, I have some answers now. Uh, they're not always the best answers, like there are problems here, and again, I, I can't underestimate Lilligan, uh, but I do feel like we have answers to the problems that are presented directly by Celeste. Um, so let's go ahead and move over to our showdown view, and I will show you exactly what we're bringing. We're bringing one team this week. We don't need to. Uh, just need one. Um, because, again, we have a roster of seven, and one of those is a pig knight. So um, I'm sorry, Pudgy, you're not coming this week. Uh, we do have Trakina the Heracross holding the Citrus Berry. Uh, actually, everything is holding a Citrus Berry, except for Moltor, the Magmar, who is holding Eviolite, and Kendrix, the Sand Slash, who is holding our left over. So everything else is holding Citrus. Um, nothing should have Pluck, and I'm not super worried about Bug Bite. So that should be okay. Um, and I just, I feel like... The recovery is going to be super useful over the course of the match. So that's the direction that we went in there. Um, hopefully we can pull this off, guys. Uh, again, this is the era of team preview, which means we are not necessarily leading Trakina in both of these matches, although we could. I've thought about leading Trakina specifically against Celeste to draw out her Crobat uh, and hard whopping into Merrick so I can put paralyze something. Like, I think that could be extremely good. Um, but again, the name of the game against Celeste is managing a little bit. 100%. If we can manage it, um, then we'll be in a, in a really, really good place. Um, but yeah, that's that's what we're bringing this week, guys. I, I hope that it does well. Again, the, the scoreboard is really close right now. It's really, really close. I'm in last, but I'm only, I believe, 50 points. No, 30. No, no, no. That's that's nice. <laughs> yeah, I'm 50 points behind Celeste in first. I'm in third place, which means that, like, that's that's a difference that I could make up tonight if Celeste loses both of her matches and I win mine. So we are we are neck and neck with each other. Um, and I'm going to do my very best to be you guys proud and to uh, fight myself into a good position. 
Um, but yeah, that's going to be everything for today, guys. As always, I've been Johnny Financial. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see y'all next time.